Uh, we're here for an informal session, January 21st, and we have with us from the Animal Shelter, the Claremont Rescue Human, uh, Claremont to the Rescue Humane Society, uh, Eva Devon and Misty Hale uh, Viscuzo. Um, so, ladies, would uh, love to hear from you and find out how things are going uh, the 21st day of your operation. Yes, <laughs> um, I have prepared some statistics. Would you all like a copy of these? Sure. Over? Okay. Are you Misty or Eva? I'm Misty. I'm yes, okay. from the shelter director. It's very nice to meet all of you. Good to meet you. Thanks. Thank you, Misty. And uh, also, we have prepared our standard operating procedures. I apologize, I only. Yeah, that's, that's all right. We'll share. So, on our statistics, um, the pages, I made it very detailed for the first um, session. Pages one and three go together, and pages two and four go together. So, so far this month, we have taken in a total of 101 animals. That does include the 14 that were surrendered from Claremont County Humane Society as well. Um, you'll see that we've taken 33 cats, 56 dogs, and then we had uh, we have our chickens, we had a couple of goats, we had a pig, a rabbit. we had a <laughs> rabbit, yeah. Um, so things are going just fine so far. We've had uh, great support from the community. Um, adoptions are going well so far. Our spay and neuter program is going very well. Um, and animal control is going very well as well. Still, like you said, only 21 days into it, so we have a ways to go. A lot, a lot more to get under our belt, but um, so far we're doing really well. We've had a total of 28 adoptions. Um, we've worked with some of our rescue groups in the community as well as the public for adoptions. And um, we have our first fundraiser coming up on the 29th at Applebee's. That's right. We hope that everybody comes that day. 10% of your bill will go to the shelter as a donation. So that's January 29th. Yes, sir. Which Applebee's? On Glen SD Road. Thank you. Yes, on Glen SD Road. So um, everything is, like I said, going very, very well. Uh, what's a pocket pet? Sure. A pocket pet would be like a gerbil, a hamster. Sugar glider. Sugar glider, yeah. Very Sugar small. Yeah. Those are getting to be very popular. Very popular, actually. Yes, very mm -hmm. popular. And those chickens you have, as I recall, those are for the prosecutor's office? Yes, sir. That is correct. And we also have a horse in custody as well. <coughs> and they'll probably leaving at some point. Yes, sir. So do you fix breakfast for the staff with the eggs? Because I know you get eggs. For the we actually do. We brought our griddle in. We've had fried egg sandwiches a couple of times. <laughs> we have. We definitely have. When the time comes, you need to get rid of them. I'll adopt the chickens. Great, 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 great. Oh, good. I'll mark you down. So if somebody wanted to, say, come to the shelter to be a volunteer to walk the dogs oh sure what, what, what would they need to do Sure, we um, actually have just started our um, volunteer program getting everything together as far as our processes and procedures and our very first volunteer orientation is on the 8th okay. um, that is a Saturday and um, everybody will you go through a, a brief orientation and then everyone will be given the rules and everyone will be able to volunteer that day I know you're looking for volunteer walkers. What other volunteer opportunities are there? Sure. So depending on what people are interested in, there's everything from uh, basic socialization with the animals. If you'd like to sit in the cat rooms and spend some time with them. If you'd like to do behind the scenes work where you want to help clean the kennels and take care of the animals, um, laundry, dishes, sweeping, customer service, um, phone calls, things like that. There's pretty much a volunteer opportunity almost everywhere in the building. And to bathe the dogs also. Yep, we had a yep, couple we have girls. We have a groomer that's come on board as well to help us, a couple of them actually, and they, they come, they bring their own equipment, and uh, they will take care of the dogs that need um, to be shaved or nail trim, bath, things like that. But if you would like to come and bathe, we had uh, oh, Jill yeah. and them, you can always come and bathe yeah, the dogs absolutely. yourself also. Mm -hmm. 
we have a tub back there that you can use. And a lot of people like to do that, it seems like. We also started a foster program where um, the animals are still property of the shelter for all intents and purposes, but they are in a temporary home off-site. Um, we do have two dogs and one cat in foster home right now, so that's going very well. It frees up space in the facility, and it also you know, helps the animal to not have to live in the shelter because it's pretty scary for them sometimes. Can you maybe explain again what your responsibility is in reference to cats? I mean, feral cats, things like that. Ooh. From, from our point of view, from a county commissioner point of view, the dog warden and dogs are our mission. Correct. And Correct. Then I understand that. The Humane Society. Oh. From the. From I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, from the standpoint of the Humane Society. Yeah, there's some um, confusion there. I know there's been some people who have said that they. Thought we weren't taking them in. Yeah, no, we are exactly. taking in cats. Yes. You said there was someone who called about what? A feral cat. Oh, sure, sure. We actually have, um, we've had a couple of feral cats so far in the facility. And right now, um, feral cats are, are, by definition, not adoptable. They're not tame cats. Um, there is a difference between feral cats and outdoor cats. Outdoor cats can be friendly community cats. Um, but in regards to feral specifically, at this time, we are still kind of working out what our stance is going to be. Currently, if someone were to call and say, I have a feral cat that's you know living on my property, there are some questions that we would ask like, is it healthy? Is it uh, of good weight? Um, that would say to us without visibly seeing the animal that it has a food source, it has a place to stay warm if it's not injured. Our stance at this time is that the animal is always better where it is if it's a feral cat, if it's not in any kind of danger. Um, in a business district, things or like that. Or endangering anybody else. Or endangering anyone else, exactly. So, is a feral um, cat considered a domestic cat or no, a wild? No, it would be wild. Mm -hmm. okay. So then you have outdoor tame cats that would still be domestic pets, but they live outside. Um, so our stance on those are going to be with ferals. We hope to encourage people to reach out for resources on spaying and neutering them. We're, we're still in the works of meeting with the different organizations to talk about um, TNR, which is trap, neuter, return, um, shelter, neuter, return, just spay and neuter programs in general to help folks because sometimes the problem is that uh, there are just too many cats running around in their area because they're not altered. Um, and then in regards to tame pet cats, we do have them for adoption at the shelter. Okay. And, and you have a different philosophy with the cattery, I understand. Oh, sure. Oh, so yeah. the um, previous group had, in regards to the way the building is set up, the previous group had the cages. They're called kitty condos. And those are just individual cages where the animals are basically on display to the public and available for adoption. Um, ours is more of a like a free roaming yeah. a, a community cat room where only adoptable, spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and healthy animals, cats rather, are available for adoption in there. We found, and in shelters across the globe, have found that when they're not cooped up in that cage, they're friendlier, they're happier, they're less stressed out, um, therefore they're much more highly adoptable. So um, I think currently, as of today, there are 10 cats in our community area and they live very well together you have to give them options some of them may not want to be this close to each other so they can go into the cat tree and sit in a space where they have some private time or they can go hide in one of the little cat beds on the floor so that they can have some alone time but um, generally speaking you don't have fights in there and when someone walks in it's always fun for them and very inviting for the public to come in and sit down and see them as pets instead of as you know in a cage so, so far that's working out very well for us. more of an environment like they'd have in a in residence home. once they're adopted. Yes, sir, right. absolutely. So they, mm -hmm. so they would acclimate better. Yes, and socialized. Stay acclimated yeah. yes. and right. socialized in that environment. That's a good idea. And the perception to the community or to a, a person when they walk in there, like I said, the cats run right up and say hi. They're very excited and interested in um, seeing the folks come into the room. Okay, say a person's interested in adopting a dog or a cat. Um, what is the cost and what do I get for that? Sure. So um, for a cat, we'll start with cats. A cat um, 11 months and above 
as we will call an adult, we'll refer to as an adult, is $55. That includes their spay and neuter, their microchip, they have an RCP vaccine, which is a feline distemper vaccine. They're dewormed for roundworms and hookworms. I think that that's what you get with a kitty. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. And then um, kittens, that would be 11 months and under, are $70. And the um, same applies with them. For dogs and puppies, it's $100 adoption fee. You get your license, spay neuter, microchip. A canine distemper vaccine, canine bordetella vaccine, and a deworming and microchip. And what was the price of the dog? One hundred dollars. Good deal. So it, you get a lot of a lot with the the animals. When the dog warden get, goes out, does he check an animal if it has a microchip? Is that part of the process when he checks them in, or if he is, you mean if he like picks up a dog running at large, the very first thing is to check for any visible collars or tags, mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing would be to scan them for a microchip. It's got a wand that we would. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's called a micro, microchip scanner, and you hold the button and you hold it directly onto the animal's skin, and you go from side to side, underneath, down the shoulders, and down the back of the neck because the chips are implanted between the shoulder blades, mm -hmm. but because they're subcutaneous, they can migrate a little bit, kind of over the years, move side to side in the, in the fat cells. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do scan them right away to make sure. And if a microchip is found, then we immediately will call the microchip company, get the owner's information, and try to locate that uh, owner and um, get a hold of them to come get their pet. So do you have a vet that inserts the microchip, or how do you guys go about putting them in? The microchips are implanted by the staff in the facility if um, if the animal is not already chipped. Also, when they go for their spay or neuter, the veterinarian can do those as well while the they're at the staff at your office can do it. Can do them as well, and we will be offering one program that we'll be offering is microchipping to the public. Um, again, being 21 days, we still have to get our supplies together and everything, and we will announce that as well. But we will do discounted microchipping at the shelter because that is the only form of permanent identification. I think that'd be a great public awareness uh, thing to. You're absolutely you know, right. At, at yeah, microchipped, mm -hmm. and I would don't do it discounted. I would try to make money at it because it could be a good fundraiser. Yeah, well, one thing that we're going to do on the 31st to encourage people to... Well, it sounds like they can do it really <laughs> inexpensively. Well, your so vet charge is like 55 to $65, and that's why a lot of people don't do it. Right, it's so not very cost-effective. For 20 or, so. or 25 mm -hmm. then you get more people. And that includes the registration it. as well. So the price implant. it below a vet, but price it above your cost. But I think exactly. if right. you made a did some public awareness through the media, you could yeah. probably get a lot of people that would bring their pets in to be You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah I've done it in the past, and sure. we've had a lot of people. On the 31st specifically, since it's the last day to get your license at regular um, cost, we are doing a discounted microchip um, if you come in that day to have your pet. Um, okay. But I would imagine so many pets that escape that end up with the dog warden and at your facility, it's because the they largest pulled percentage. away from their collar. Yep, the largest percentage yeah. of those do not have. And with the tags don't absolutely right. Right. Mm -hmm. have yep. any effect. So we try to encourage them if an owner is found, if they come in, we, we will encourage them um, to microchip the dog at a discounted rate that day so that we can get a hold of them a lot easier. So it, when this microchip is scanned, I presume it tells who the manufacturer of the chip was and gives an ID number that so they the way back to? The yeah. way specifically that works, when you scan them, um, personally, I always re refer to it as the um, the animal's social security, their dog, doggy or kitty social security uh -huh. number, because that number is unique to them as a social security number is to you. And so you scan them, the number pops up on the wand, and then you call, for example, let's say Home Again Microchip, you, and you know by the number what company it is. Okay. You call Home Again and you say, I found pet number 985112. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yep. And they will say that animal belongs to Bob Proud at this address and this phone number. And then we, they also will reach out to the owner as well as us. Good. So it's very important with microchips that you always keep your contact information up to date because if you move next year, yeah. they'll still have your original contact information on file. You want to talk about your Amazon wish list? Oh, sure, 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 sure. We are really excited to have that and, again, been very overwhelmed with um, the public support uh, and the donations that we have received. So once you go onto our um, onto Amazon wish list and you type in Claremont to the Rescue Humane Society, um, I've updated it. Every week I keep it updated for the you know items that we need the most in the facility or regularly, um, and you can just find those items right there. It'll say shelter needs, and everything is listed for you. Um, once you purchase the item, they ship it directly to um, our building. 
It's like Christmas almost every it day. It sure is. It sure is. We get all kinds of stuff. We're really happy about everything we've received. I think the big message we just need to send to people, too, is responsible pet ownership. Absolutely. Right. Spaying, neutering, licensing, and, you know, for us, microchipping, because, again, seeing so many animals that come in without collars, tags, or any type of identification. Again, the microchip is the number one only way collars fall off, tags fall off. A microchip is permanent, and it'll be something that is one of our main focuses with people along with licensing and spaying and neutering um, in regards to responsible pet ownership. That'll be definitely a focus for us. Good. So if I want to adopt an animal or I see a stray dog, something that, who do I, what's, what's your phone number? Sure, it's 732-8854. If you see a stray dog running, give us a call and we'll send an officer out um, to pick that animal up. Okay. Anything else? Anyone in the audience have any questions? Anything else? Commissioner Yubel? No. Thank you for uh, presenting today. Good thanks luck. For, uh, thanks for updating us. Good luck. Absolutely. Continued success. Thank you very much. Thank Good. You. That concludes our website. Please. What's that? I can tell you've been on the Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That concludes our informal session for today. Thanks for joining us and God bless. <laughs>